Okay guys and gals, we have another coffee with High Boy and the topic for this video is choice of handgun for your first handgun. So, you know, that is a question that comes up quite often on my channel and typically when people ask me that or even, you know, in my daily walk of life, normally they have a, an idea of a handgun that they're thinking about. Normally, they came up with that particular handgun because somebody's told them about that. Now, on YouTube, I think it's different. I think people know what they want because they've watched different videos and they've learned a lot about the guns, but in my walk in life where people don't really follow YouTube, I'll have a friend come up to me and they'll say, well, I'm kind of thinking about a gun, and they'll say as an example, they'll say, well, I heard about the Glock, but they don't really know what the Glock is. If, if I put a clock in Springfield in front of them and they didn't know which was the difference from a, a little ways away, they, they couldn't tell. They just don't know anything about the gun. So you have two people. You have someone that someone told them about the clock and to them they don't even know what that is. And then someone on YouTube, they understand what the clock is, but they haven't really made that first purchase. So let's talk about both those in one. I think that I believe, I believe it's dangerous to tell somebody that I believe this is the gun you need to buy or this is the gun that you just have to have because that's what works best for me because it doesn't work that way it's just like when I have a perfect example here when I have people ask me uh, in the comments how high what's the best height for me to build my bench or how high do you build yours they want to build theirs just like mine but see they're not at the same height as me so ergonomically if someone built their bench like this you guys think my wife wants to come out here and load on a bench this high? Absolutely not. So I always say, well, you know, you want to build your bench somewhere around the top of your, of your belt, your belt, right? You want to make it fit you. So really, you should make your handgun fit you, right? Because you're an individual. It's frustrating when somebody gets that first handgun and they just can't hit with it. It's a fact. So now let me tell you this. When... When I have, in the past, I have had so many people that I've taken out and they say, okay, I want, I want to buy a handgun and they have a particular handgun in mind. And I say, okay, okay, that's fine. I say, let's just go out on Saturday. I, I've got the selection and let, let's let you try all of them. Because you wouldn't just walk in and buy a pair of shoes and walk out. Well, you might, but guess what? Those shoes usually get taken back, don't they? You can't take the gun back. So this is what happens. When I go up now, just for the video, so you know, I've already I've already made sure all these are clear, they're not loaded, and at this point in the video, I'm not going to check all of these, okay? So what happens is uh, I will take a person out to the desert, I get the guns lined up, and I always start them off with a, this one of these little Ruger three screw twenty twos, okay? I always start them off with one of these. And this is why. I will load this up. If they've never shot a gun before, I put one round in it. That way, once they cock it and pull the trigger, they're clear. But this is what I tell them. I'll, I'll set that, that uh, target at 10 yards out, and I'll tell them. I'll say, all I want you to do is I just want you to cock it and point it. I don't want you to use the sights, but I just want you to point it as if it was an extension of your finger. And I want you to squeeze the trigger. And I just want to see where your shot hits. And they do. They'll do that. So then after they do that and they understand it, I'll let them shoot a couple cylinder full through. And they're having a really good time with this 22. And then what we'll do is this. Is then I'll take and I'll begin working up the revolvers. And I always have light loads. I never, I never put anything with a lot of recoil. You don't want to do that. Because that instills fear. You want them to have fun. If they're having fun, you're going to get the best results. And then we'll begin working up. And now they're working with what feels good and what doesn't feel good. And then when they get done, I will put that revolver back in their hand and I'll say, I want you to shoot this again. And now they pull the trigger. You know, this revolver right here Everybody should have a Ruger <laughs> single-action 22 revolver, a little rimfire. 
every time they come back to this, they fall in love with how well it points for them. So then I say, based off that, now that you know what really good is, now, which one of those do you really think you liked? Because the first time through, they think they liked that Glock. That's what somebody told them. Not the case. They go back through and they say, I really like the Springfield. And then I always do the exercise. I always do the exercise of having them coming up with each of those in front of that target where they can work with it. Man, that, that's the best. I always tell people when you go into a local gun shop, you want to grab those firearms and you want to begin bringing those up and see which ones that that sign automatically lines up. You're not having to hunt for it, right? Well, the one thing about this little 22 is when they first brought it up and they weren't looking for the sights. After that, once I begin working them on the sights, they know what's easy to find. And now, after they've rotated through these and went back to there, they understand and what a nice way that is. Now, they begin going through all of these and then they say, you know, I thought I really liked that one I was after, but I really do see that this one or this one fits my hand better, okay? A larger hand uh, is going to require a different handgun. A smaller hand is going to require a smaller handgun most generally. Now, in the way of the semi-auto pistols, uh, the evolution of where the companies have come is great and I welcome it because there's so much out there that now when I go out and I work with somebody, I say, so now that you understand what you're looking for, now I think we should go to a local gun shop and let's look at other manufacturers and let's really get you dialed in. And now they know what they're looking for at that gun shop, right? So it's really dangerous to say that I think a person should shoot this particular gun or this particular gun. And that's just the facts. And as far as, uh, as your handguns go, you know, grips have so much to do with it. You know, this little, this little Ruger here, as an example, over time I've looked at custom wood grips I could have made for this. I always thought, man, I'd like to doll this up and get some nice grips. But the fact of the matter is, is I like the slick grip and the rubber on this. And you want to talk about a gun that points good now, for me, guys, I can, I can reach out at 100 yards with this. And anybody could if they took their time and they practiced regularly. But for anyone just to pull this up and it match them, it, it, it won't. It just won't. Some people are going to have to hunt around for those sights, right? Just like maybe you might have a gun that you could just get spot on real quick at 100 yards, squeeze the trigger, and you've got it. You give that to me, I could do it, but I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to pay more attention to the sights. I'm going to have to bring them up, get my sight picture. I'm going to have to steady my breath and squeeze the trigger. It just was a lot more work. So we're all different, and that, that's 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 what we have to understand. And even guys that have been shooting guns for a while don't necessarily understand that. And uh, growing up uh, young, the, what we learn because. My father was a gunman of all gunmen, owned every gun there was ever to be manufactured at least two times, right? And so the two things that really affect the gunman's performance are uh, fit of that handgun and your trigger. It's not that match grade barrel. That helped for people to get real good and you're competing, but just for the average shooter and people that shoot a lot, how it feels and the trigger, that's everything to that handgun. It's everything. So now thinking about that, if, if trigger and how that handgun fits is everything, for a self-defense handgun, now you don't want to touch the trigger. You just want to leave that factory. We're talking 
uh, legal issues, you're talking, you just, man, you don't want a trigger job and have to come up and it goes off, right? You don't want that. So we leave the we leave the trigger stock. We don't do anything. So now you have a firearm that's just primo fit to you. Well, okay, so that trigger's factory. You're not going to hold the greatest shot groups, but I'll guarantee you if that gun fits you, you're going to hold the shot groups that you need at uh, just very, uh, very good practice distances that's going to help you in a defense, in a defense situation in your home and even with a a poor trigger you can still do amazing things 40 and 50 yards out you can get a hundred yards out if you're lucky but uh, just because it's a stock trigger doesn't mean you can't get out and have a little fun doesn't mean that that application wouldn't work for a little long distance at self-defense but I'll guarantee you this most of most of your self-defense situations they're not much, I'm not going to go like this because most self-defense situations, they kind of happen something like this. Not much past your arm's reach. So now that we understand that most confrontations don't happen much further than this, how important is it that that firearm does fit you? Because now you're just pointing, right? It wasn't really the trigger that you were depending on because you were so nervous you didn't really... You didn't really think about it, but you were really grateful that it fit your hand and it was pointing just where you needed it. Because don't forget this. Don't forget this. When we were growing up, your youngest years, before you could talk, and you wanted the cookies, I always say this, you wanted the cookies out of that cookie jar. And how did you tell mom and dad you wanted a cookie? You pointed at the cookie. You want to know how good you got at it? You got so good that if you'd have had a laser on the end of your finger, you'd have been dead center on that cookie jar, right? Think about your kids. Think about kids, how smart they are, and they learn to point. Because they're good. They can play these video games. Well, they can point at a cookie jar, and so did you. So if this, if this gun fits you, and the cookie jar comes through your door at 2 in the morning, and you got to point the cookie jar. You want to make sure that all you're holding is an extension of your finger. And you're going to point at the cookie jar. And you're going to defend the people that you love. And yourself. It's going to work. So what's the best handgun? The best handgun that you could ever purchase as your first handgun. Well, is actually a little single action 22 revolver. It's the basics. Guys, in my life, when I couldn't afford the guns, you can afford to shoot these. And I'm going to tell you, if it's all I had to defend my house with, I could make this work pretty doggone good, right? But once you have something like this and you can practice with it regularly, I always say get a 22, just out of default. But really, the best handgun to have for your first handgun, if it's for self-defense, is, is what fits you the best. What is easiest for you to hit something with. Look, one well-placed shot is much more valuable than three ill-placed shots. Okay? So you need to get the one that really does fit you. And that's just, that's just the fact. So, all right, guys. Uh, so, I hope that that answers questions out there. Guys, I'm not a professional. I try to approach this from what I know and what my experience is. And my experience is that there is no way, no way, guys. That 1911 is my most favorite semi-auto. If I could only have one semi-auto, it wouldn't be the clock. The clock is fabulous. Don't don't get me wrong. I love my Springfield, but I'd have to take my 1911. Why, guys? Straight there. I just need one. I just need one real good one. That's all I need. Think about this. I always always look at it this way. 
if I'm up on a trail on a mountainside and I come face to face with a bear that's going to do business, do I want to ask myself, am I afraid of that? No. I want to know that it's time to do business and I need to do it really good. And as fast as a bear moves, I want to do it on the first shot. I don't want to screw around. One shot. One shot. And I'm going to pull it off the first time. And when I get done, if someone says, well, were you, were you in fear of your life? I'd say, well, what, what I was most grateful for is that my pop got me into these and I learned what I learned and all I did is I did what I had to do. And I'm alive because of it. So, if all I need is one shot in something like that, now, if it's a one-on-one, -on -one, I just need one good shot. I just, I just need that one shot. That's all I need. And I'm going to take that one shot. Now, if you've got more than one perpetrator, you're going to, hey, hey, you treat them equally. Each guy gets one shot. Okay? So, just kind of think that way. There's nothing wrong with extra mags. The extra mag. Why do we carry an extra mag? Uh, uh, we carry an extra mag because if something happens, you have a fail to feed, you drop the mag, clear it, and you're going to use your second mag. You don't want to use this. You could have an issue. If you have a fail to feed, you're going to ditch that, aren't you? You're going to follow right up with this mag. You're going to take over from there, right? That's why we have extra mags. I don't have a problem with people carrying a, a double mag pouch that, you know, I've got friends with the 1911s and they do that. Honestly, for me, if I had a 9mm between what I have in my pistol and just one magazine, I feel that's plenty. But if someone wants to have two, eh, you know, I got to say capacity is king. But always be looking for that handgun that you can do it on the first shot. I mean, guys, that's just it. Now, as far as my preference of this... Uh, the 1911, you know, I feel like I could write my name with it. You know, I'm on, on a block, uh, you know, not so much. You know, I kind of could. My Springfield, I got to tell you guys, I got to tell you guys this. Coyote, 400 yards with this. I was like 9 inches over him. <laughs> 9 inches over him. This shoots, okay. I can bust rabbits running 25 yards with this, but I hate it because I lose the cases. But this Springfield XD, marvelous. Guys, this is a great gun, but it doesn't mean it's going to fit you. It just doesn't mean that. It just means it fits me really good. But it could fit you, right? Guys and gals, that's the end of this video. I, I hope that kind of cleared some of this uh, thought process up for those that are kind of curious as to what is the best handgun for your first handgun and I will say one handgun that would probably fit most people would be this Smith & Wesson Model 10. Guys it's really nice so okay guys and gals uh, that's the end of this video God bless we'll see you on the next video.